Hey, it's Dave Altavilla for Hot Tech and Hot Hardware. I'm here with Mike from Intel at the Lunar Lake Demo Showcase. And uh, we have an interesting gaming demo here that Mike's got to show us, right, Mike? Yeah, absolutely. So we're showing you at Apple Staffel's comparison with AMD's latest, the AMD Strix Point. That's a Ryzen 9 AI 370, HX370, excuse me. Yep. Uh, this is our brand, brand new Intel Core Ultra Series 2, also the Ultra 9 part, which is the 288V. Okay. We're playing F124, newest Formula One game from EA Sports. Yep. Uh, same settings on both sides. They're 1080p. They're both running ray trace shadows. Uh, they're at high settings otherwise. Uh, only difference being we're using FSR on the AMD side. Okay. And best advantage possible. Yep. And XESS on the Intel side. Okay. Because it looks good. Mostly we're looking at performance today. We'll hop into the game in a moment. But something we've noticed at the start of the race is a huge visual quality difference. And if you look particularly in this area on each side, yeah, maybe we'll be able to see that on camera, but you'll see just, just how much they really struggle. Oh, yeah. There's some serious judder going on on the left. Interesting. Okay. Pretty smooth with XCSS going on. Okay. So we'll hop into a game. I can't really drive both. Of them. Can we have another driver on the left side here? Have a volunteer? Here, yeah, grab it. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. All right. So we got what well, looks like 50, 63, 60 frames per second versus 40 frames per second on the stretch points on the left. Well, sometimes you see, probably saw that 28. Yeah. Some odd frame rate drops over there sometimes. Tell the visual quality. Yep. Yeah. Start as well. Just all in all, a much better experience. Smoother experience, yeah. So this is an Intel Core Ultra 9. Correct. Excellent. Gaming performance. F1 2024 with XCSS at 60 frames per second and change. Strix point spikes up a little bit and gets into that range depending on the game, but we do see some lower mins for sure. Yeah, if we do this in a uh, benchmark, we get mid 70s versus mid 50s. Gotcha. And some of those max frame times, in fact, the max frame time on average is almost double. So, yeah, much smoother. Nice. Great stuff. Thank you. Probably yep. on, you know, kind of the replacement for uh, PC Mark. Yep. Um, but now they're adding a bunch of AI benchmarks. So they've had AI for Android. Now you've got computer uh, image generation as well as computer vision. So right now it's running computer vision on the NPU. Okay. Um, using uh, OpenVINO. Okay. Okay. Now here we've got another new, you know, it's been a while for AI benchmarks, right? You can do Resonate, you can do all these GitHub things. But now Geekbench has this AI benchmark. Um, and you see I can run it uh, on, you know, I can run the Onyx or NPU. So uh, we'll go ahead and kick that off. How does it run if you have Onyx instead of Open Demon? Uh, I haven't run that much, but you know, it runs it. Uh, now over here, we've all heard of Stable Diffusion, right? Yep. So oh, is that the GIMP plugin? Yeah, this is the GIMP plugin, Open Vino. Uh, I go ahead, I've created a new image. For now, though, let's go ahead and we can choose the layer. We've created a new file, or maybe I just don't like this one. I go ahead, you see here, I've already loaded the model. For, I can choose between best performance, which runs on the NPU, or balance, which kind of use leverages both, or best performance. Uh, so we're going to go ahead with power efficiency. Go ahead and run here. You see it starts cycling through all the steps to generate the image. And bam, like that, you've got your raccoon, which the prompt was raccoon in a glass jar surrounded by colorful candy. How long did that take? Uh, it took about 4.7 from the second. Cool. Very cool. Are these just Intel white books? What machines are they? Uh, yeah, they're Prototypes. development vehicles. We had worked with all the you know different manufacturers early on. So gotcha. And here's your Procyon AI result. Great result, right? Procyon AI result. Hey, it's Dave Altavilla for Hot Hardware here with my buddy Mike from Intel. And we've got Mike. By the way, you're a regular. Good to see you again. Uh, thanks, Dave. <laughs> so what do we get going on? We get a little bit of a gaming demo here with uh, Core Ultra Lunar Lake. 
Yeah, so uh, we have a few systems here for this demo. We have our Intel Core Ultra 7, as well as our Intel Core Ultra 9. Uh, the Intel Core Ultra 7 is running in a 17 watt configuration, and Ultra 9 is running in a 30 watt configuration. But just because they're in that configuration doesn't mean that they're limited to that. This the Ultra 7 can go to 30 watts, uh, the Ultra 9 can go to 17. Uh, it, there can be different configurations, but for the demo we have here, we have a 17 watt setup and a 30 watt setup. Got it. As well as we have our competition, we have a Qualcomm system, as well as AMD's HX370. Okay. And the big, the big message here, what we're showing is we're showing Dota 2 uh, playing at 1080p medium settings. And what you can see here from the package power, uh, Intel Core Ultra 7 at 17 watts is matching, if not beating, uh, the competition at a lower curve. Okay. And then at the same uh, package profile, our Ultra 9 is outperforming the competition. Nice. So the, the AMD systems is a Ryzen 9? It's a Ryzen 9, uh, uh, I think AI. HX370? Correct. Okay. So that's running at 30 watts, pulling 90, 84, 78 frames per second. We got the 30 watt Lunar Lake at uh, 90 frames per second, pulling 30 watts. Now we're at, now we're at 100 frames per second. And then the this is a 15 watt config? 17 watt config. 17 watt config. That includes the memory. Right. Only well, about 65 frames per second. Well, we're in at different points of the benchmark. So that's why we have this nice little leaderboard here. Right. You can see everything simultaneously. That's a good idea right there because it changes as we go through the frames. Compelling stuff for the Core Ultra 9 288 and the Core Ultra 7 258V. Thanks very much, Mike. Good to see you again. Thanks, Dave.